Hey, good morning guys, Auto Fanatics. So today we are gonna be doing a Shelby video, but we're not gonna be doing a video on my GT350R. We're gonna be doing a video on the 2014 GT500. And specifically, I'm gonna show you guys a lot of differences between this car and the 350R. We're also gonna take it out on the road. I have not been doing a drive review because we had such a long winter. So this is a 2014 Shelby GT500. This one has the track pack. Also, this car is one of the cleanest you're gonna find in the market. And I'm just gonna show you guys real quick, based on looking under the car, you guys could see how clean the chassis is, all the decals, all the clamps. There's not a speck of corrosion anywhere on this car. This car came out of a museum and it's collector owned and it's still collector owned. So you can see it right there. So this car, we've decided we're going to be selling it. So this is just gonna be a complimentary video just going over all the highlights and features of the car and we're gonna take it for a drive. And like I said, the one thing I wanna point out in this video between these two cars, because even though they're made by Ford and they're both Shelby's, they are two completely different animals. This is a sports car and this is a muscle car. What do I mean by that? Solid rear axle, 660 horsepower, 630 pounds of torque with a 5.8 liter supercharged motor. Very old school, it feels old school. This feels like a European sports car. And like I said, the 350Rs and 350s, they're competing with a lot of the stuff coming out of Germany. And that car never really was designed to compete with anything coming out of Germany. So I'm just gonna move some cars around and I'm gonna show you guys some of the highlights and features of the S197 2014. This is the last of this type of breed because it's got a solid rear axle, Tremec TR6060, and it's got a 5.8 liter, they call it the Trinity motor, which has a hell of a lot of power. And this car is a hell of a lot of fun to drive because it's hard to put the power down, it goes sideways, and it just feels like a vintage muscle car that's on steroids. So just like the S550, you know, you had the hard plastic over here. This has been the same all the way through the production line up until 2018 where they started putting the soft touch material. You can see it there, it's got the double, what they call the eyebrow style dashboard. Now this dashboard is very reminiscent to a 67 Ford Mustang. I had plenty of those all the way up to 1970. Even the 65s where you had the two little areas up here. So this particular one has the Recaro sports seats. Now these Recaro seats are the same ones that came in the S550 GT performance pack with a little bit of a smaller bolster it feels like and also the 2012 and 2013 Boss 302, which I almost bought one of those many times. You also get the double racing stripes going down the middle. Now they did these stripes in white, blue, and red throughout the series. You have some Miko suede, or the, you know we call it fake Alcantara over here. There's no pullout bolster, but the seats are manual. And believe it or not, they're actually a lot more comfortable to sit in these seats than the ones in my GT350R. Also, there's no pull-up reverse lever on this particular car. So it's very manual, very analog. You don't have to push up or down. It comes with the ball shifter like you see there. Very basic, there's not a lot going on over here, but that's really why this car is so cool. It doesn't have a lot of technology. This is just pure muscle, pure old school. So I think like this type of a car, and the reason why these things are still desired and people still love them is because you can't buy a Mustang anymore brand new that has this old school feel with a modern reliability. And that's what's great about the S197 platform is that over the years, you know, when Ford started to try to retro style the Mustang, it was in 2005. And, you know, when I remember I saw that Mustang, I was like, ah, oh, this is pretty cool. They're starting to come back, make it look a lot like the old school cars. And then over the years, 2007, 2010, it got better, better, and better. And like I said, they really, really fine tuned the rear suspension with the live axle. And it's got like, a, you know, trailing arm design. And to be honest with you, like I said, this is not a sports car. This is a muscle car. What do I mean by that? You could do burnouts all day long. You could race people stoplight to stoplight. You could drive this car up to 180 miles an hour. You could do whatever you want in a straight line, but this is not a car you're gonna to wanna to take to a road course or an autocross or go on a very challenging, twite, twisty back roads and try to beat the crap out of it because the back of the car with all this power, if you get in the throttle too hard, you're gonna lose control, you're gonna hit a tree almost immediately. So this car is absolutely flawless. This car has got 6,000 miles on it. And like I just showed you guys in the beginning, there's not a speck of corrosion, there's not a speck of damage on this car. This car is going to be one of the best ones on the market when we list it. So I'm shooting this video almost like a review and almost as a pre-sale video for you guys. So if anybody is watching the Autofanatic channel and is interested in an incredible 
2014 GT500 in this spec, please contact me through the Auto Fanatic website. So we're gonna pop the hood, I'm gonna show you guys the meat and potatoes of what this car is all about right now. This is the 5.8 liter supercharged motor. This motor was hand built by Ford Performance. You guys see it there, it's got the plaque and it almost looks like it's shoehorned in here. I mean, it barely fits, but that's what's cool about it. And actually with the blower sticks up this high, it reminds me of like a vintage muscle car with a huge blower popping out through the hood scoop or a hole in the hood. So you can see it there. So there's no strut tower brace. It's probably one of the caveats of this model is that it doesn't handle like the S550. And a lot of that is because of the old school design platform and having a hell of a lot of power up front and a lot of weight up front. But to be honest with you, it drives pretty good and it drives a hell of a lot better than most of the custom Pro Touring and rest of mod Mustangs that you'll find in the market. But that is the heart of this beast. This is what makes this car special, is this insane motor with 660 horsepower and 630 foot-pounds of torque going through a manual transmission. And this one also has, you know, the updated oil coolers and the Torsen limited slip differential as well. Another thing cool about this car is it's kind of like missing a grill here, right? When you look at this car, you, you figure you want to see some sort of mesh or something going on, but they actually removed all of this opening to get cooling to the coolers for the supercharger because this thing generates a serious amount of power and a serious amount of heat. Now, if you look at the bottom, it's got a little bit of a front spoiler, not much. This is not an aerodynamically perfected car by any means whatsoever, and neither is the S550. I mean, it's, the S550 is definitely better, but it's definitely not up to the level of some of the other cars that I get to drive and work on. But as you can see, this car in this color looks absolutely phenomenal. You know, I think any, any Shelby, whether it's a 350 or a 500, blue with white stripes is pretty iconic. Uh, same thing with my 350R. It's probably one of the best color combos you're gonna get. And it's kind of cool that I got both of them out today and you can see it here. So the Kona blue, you can see it's much darker and my car has the red accents. You know, the 350R has the red accents and the S197 does not. And that's kind of cool, I kind of like that. The red stripe and the red emblem and it picks up on the red calipers. And on the GT500, the braking system, it's got six piston Brembo calipers in the front. You can see that there. And it's a single piece rotor. There's no dual cast rotor design on that. And I absolutely love these wheels. They're some of my favorite wheels on a Mustang. And then out back, you don't get anything fancy. You just get a regular, pretty much a dual piston caliper. You can see that there, so it's nothing fancy. And we're just gonna try to go in here. I don't know if you could see it, but you can see those are the custom uh, spec Bilstein shock absorbers. These are adaptive shock absorbers. You actually have a real key, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I definitely miss having a real key that you put in the car, you twist it, clutch in, and you fire it up, okay? So that's just another little, I guess by in, in our generation now, this is definitely considered old school that you actually have a real key. So we're gonna let the car warm up a little bit and uh, we're gonna hit the highway and we're gonna go for a ride. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this particular car. We're in the GT500, the S197. And the one thing I'm gonna tell you guys now, these seats are damn more comfortable than the ones in the Shelby GT350R. I tell you right now, the 350R has been killing my back and it's giving me a hard time because I got hurt a couple of months back and I don't drive the car that much and it's actually leading me to the decision of possibly letting that car go as well. But I'll talk about that in an upcoming video soon. But, uh, you know, from someone that's owned and built so many vintage Mustangs in the last 30 years, this car feels very, very similar to a vintage Mustang in terms of the seating position, where the pedals are placed and the overhang of the front of the hood. Whereas when you get into the S550, you know, the car is really big. When you get into it, it feels massive. I'll, I'll never forget the day when I traded in my Mercedes AMG SL and I walked across the street and I bought my 2015 GT Performance Pack back in 2014 and I got in and I was driving the car home and I was like, this car is huge. It, it just has this long, massive hood in the front and I just wasn't really accustomed to that you know that feel from getting into any of the vintage Mustangs that I've owned you know so this car here when you're in it it feels very much like a 65 to a 68 Mustang it really does it doesn't feel like a 6970 those are a little bit wider in the front uh, but it, it doesn't have a massive presence and I actually like that you know the dash is not too big 
Everything is placed where you need it. It's very basic. It's very analog. And I'm all about analog cars. Now this has the TR6060 gearbox, which is similar to the 350R, except this shift gate pattern is different. So reverse on this car is over and up, and it doesn't have a pull-up collar like on the Shelby GT350 and 350R, which I absolutely can't stand. So this car, from feeling it already, it has a very analog click going in and out of the gears, and I like that. Actually, this gearbox feels a little bit smoother than my 350R. It also could be due to mileage and break-in, whereas my other car only has 2,000 miles. This one has about 6,000 miles. So that could be a big difference, because I do notice you know, on any of these manual gearbox cars that after you throw some miles on them, things get a lot better. I mean, look, we're just spinning the tires right now at highway speeds at 50. And that's the difference between this car and the new modern GT500 that has a dual clutch gearbox. I mean, the new car is insane. It's heavy. It's super high performance. And not only could you drag that car and go in a straight line, you could actually take that car to a road course. The only caveat to that is that the car is so powerful and so heavy that if you track the car a lot, you're gonna go through tires and brakes and it's gonna become very, very expensive. So the one thing I noticed now, it's a little loud in here and there's no different modes in this exhaust that I could find. If somebody knows of one, let me know, but I don't think so. I mean, this is pretty much you start it up and that's what you get. And I kind of like that. Now, as far, as far as the front end, it feels okay. It doesn't feel as direct and sharp as the, you know, the Shelby GT350R that I have, but it doesn't feel terrible. Now, when this car, when the retro Mustang started coming back in 2005, they drove horrible. I, I did not like those. I tried to buy one of those cars several times. Even in 2010, the dealership gave me a blue with white stripe GT500. It says, Phil, go take it for a drive. And I was like really excited to buy it, and I hated it. Now in 2012, 13 with the Boss 302, they did a lot of chassis development on that car. And I came really close to buying that car, but they were asking like 15 to 20 over sticker. And that's what deterred me at the time from buying it. So I waited and waited. And I'm actually glad that I've you know, had the experience to own two GT350s of the new platform because they're absolutely incredible. But uh, now this car is great. I mean, it's a cruiser. This is a car you're gonna take to Cars and Coffee. You wanna go for a long drive, it's comfortable. And if you want to have some fun, drop it down to gear and mash the throttle and hold on to your seat because this car is going to go sideways and it's going to be one hell of a blast. I'll tell you that now. Yeah, I feel, I feel the tire slipping already. We're about 60 degrees out today, so it's not super cold. It's not super warm, but with these track derived tires, you got to be very, very careful as far as what you're doing in this car. That's where like the newer cars, like the new IRS and the S550 platform, it really will save your ass. I mean, you gotta be doing something really ridiculous and illegal on the road anyway, to get those cars to do what this car could do real easily just with your right foot. Uh, and like I said, this car's got so much power and with that live axle in the back, it will bite you and bite you hard. But you know what? I'm so used to having fast cars with live axles you know, over the years with owning so many muscle cars since high school that I actually enjoy it. I like when you launch it and the car goes to the left, you know, the way the torque is transferring to the car and the way the traction is, you know, biting with the torsion differential. I like that, you know, that's just what I enjoy. And like I said, this car is not gonna be for everyone. You know, this is gonna be for someone that wants an old school car in a modern package that's reliable, you know, limited production. These cars are kind of hard to find, especially in this color combination. You don't see a lot of them, and especially in this condition. A lot of these cars, you know, they got into the hands of the wrong owners. People modified them, they changed the blowers. They, they get to the point where you modify some of these cars, and it gets to the point where the car becomes undrivable. And I don't, you know, I listen, I've been down that road so many times and I regretted it. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna do a little bit more, a little bit more. And then all of a sudden all the fumes come in the car and, and it's like nobody wants to go in the car with you because they smell like gasoline. So, you know, that's what's really great about this. Out of the box, this is a great, great package, you know, that you could drive it, you could enjoy it. Should we do a burnout? <laughs> Oh, this thing is a blast. 
You know, I can't do that in my 350R. I'm like scared to break something because the car's got so much grip. But uh, in this thing, I can do that thing all day long. And uh, like I said, when I almost bought one of these in you know the 2014, when this thing came out, uh, they were just asking a lot of money for them. And then I had a modified Cadillac CTS-V that was my burnout toy. But I like this car a lot. This one is definitely more livable to drive on a regular basis than the 350R for me, considering the injuries that I currently have with my lower lumbar and my abdominal hernia. Unfortunately, that car is torture for me to drive lately. This car, I'm like having no problems whatsoever. I didn't pop any leaves or pain pills this morning. I woke up, I felt pretty good, the weather's good, and this car is not beating me up at all. You know, like I said, the back of these Mustangs, whether it's this Mustang or the newer one, uh, you're, you know, the back of the car does bounce a little bit on the New York roads that we have, and that's just one of the attributes of it. But with the 350R, it, it sends like a pogo stick shock right into my spine, and that seems to be the issue. And, I, you know, I've been thinking about changing the seats in that car and, you know, possibly holding on to it. I don't really know. I just don't know what I want to do because, you know, the, when I had the red car, you know, and I did all the content, I started this channel, my life was very different than what it is today as far as what I'm doing in business and you know all the physical stuff that I've been involved in you know with the auto fanatic car care brand and all the products and services that I offer to you guys but uh, like I said it, it just happens that sometimes you get older you get hurt and you got to kind of adapt your toys around your lifestyle and that's pretty much what we're trying to do right now so you know this car is gonna go the Camaro is gonna go the Shelby 350R I don't know I'm still on the fence with that and I actually have someone that wants to buy the Alpha as well. So we gotta see, I got a couple of things that I'm playing around with, real radical. I may get rid of all the cars to buy one insanely exotic car, I don't know, I have to see. There's just so much stuff on the plate right now between you know business expansion and possibly relocating and you know changing up the cars a little bit. But I love this thing, absolutely love it. Pulled so freaking hard. Woo. And it's pretty stable. Like I said, it's not wandering all over the road. I'm not getting any tram lining, nothing like that. You just got to understand that this car has more power than most people can handle on a street car. So you got to really be careful. You got to get those tires warmed up and you got to know how to put that power down the best you can. And if you don't know how to put the power down, better know how to control a car with a live axle which is actually relatively easy you know the car snaps back pretty darn quick but the one thing about this car I don't have the confidence in myself as a driver to go mash the gas and drive it like a lunatic on the street whereas on the R I have so much confidence in that platform that I, I just can't get that car to scare me you know on the street I just can't get it to happen Whereas this car, you make a little bit more throttle input than you're used to, and you better hold on because you might be you might be seeing that guardrail or that tree really close in your uh, front window. But uh, that, this car is cool, though. It really is. So we're cruising right now. We're only at like 2,500 RPM. Oh, God. It's just a power delivery. Like, you know, with the 350 engines, you gotta really wind them out, which becomes really hard to do on a public road based on where that power band is. And that's where something like this shines, is that it's got more power than you need, but that power is accessible anywhere in the RPM band. So you want passing power on the highway like I just did there. You wanna get onto an on-ramp. You wanna just find an open stretch and punch it. This thing has it at all RPMs, whereas the 350 motor doesn't have that. So we just put the advanced track on. I actually had it off. I didn't realize I had it off. And you can go through your gauges and all here to see how much boost you're putting out, your air fuel ratio and all of that, similar to the S550. But but what I like, I'm like, look, we're hitting some bad roads right here. These roads are all banged up and you don't hear any squeaks and rattles in this car. It's, it's a tight chassis still, even though it's not as innovative and up-to-date as the newer models, 
it's still not a piece of junk. That's kind of what I'm telling you about. Whereas you can get into a, like those Dodge platforms and drive that car after a year, the whole car is a bucket of bolts with the rattles and creaks and everything else because it, it just doesn't have the build quality that something like this would have or even newer models would have. It's not too loud. You know, it has a very distinct, unique exhaust note. You know, it doesn't sound like the screaming, raucous, vibrating, flat plane crank. You know, like I said, the 350R, when you're in that car, and that's why I talk about it so much and why it's so special, is that the sensory feedback you get from being in that car when you're on it, there's no other car that's really gonna get you that unless you're in a full-blown, you know, fully built track car. And what I mean by that is that when you feel the vibration, you hear these noises, it almost sounds like the motor is going to explode and kill you through the firewall. You know, and that, and that adds a lot to that drama. It adds a lot to that experience. Whereas this doesn't feel like that. This feels like an old school, mild cam motor with a big blower and a hell of a lot of power, you know, with the trailing arm rear suspension and a live rear axle. So they're very, very different animals. Whereas the new GT500, that thing is a monster, absolutely monster, over 700 horsepower, dual clutch. The car is insane, but it's well over 4,000 pounds. So it's not light on its feet. So my car, the 350R, that's 36. This one's about 38. And the GT500, I believe it's like 42. Uh, depending on the spec you get on that car. But, yeah, I'm enjoying this drive today. You know, I totally love it. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I got to stop what I'm doing and put the cars away and, you know, get back to work. But, uh, yeah, this thing, it's just the, the power that it has. And I'm putting maybe 5% throttle right now because, like I said, with these tires, there's not a lot of thread on them. They're, they're pretty much like street legal slicks. And I don't want this car to go sideways, especially with all the congestion and traffic and stuff that we have. It's just not safe. I mean, if I was in a big open area like a private racetrack or something, yeah, I would probably turn everything off and, and go for it. And I would just experiment and kind of see where the limits are in the car but I'll tell you right now this uh, it's kind of cool you know to have a car where it could kind of scare you and I get in that I got that same effect years ago one of my clients had a Hennessy Viper GTS like 1200 horsepower and it was so modified and so obtrusive to drive on the street that he says hey Phil take the keys go drive it and I drove it and I punched it and the car did a full 360 installed. I says, dude, this car is not something I would ever, ever want to own. It's just too much, you know? But when you have a car that the handling is not as confidence inspired like the 350R or a Porsche GT3 or a, a Porsche Cayman, you know, like a GT4, uh, and then you have all this power, it makes you really drive the car a little bit more responsibly, a little bit more mature. You're not going to drive like, I mean, you could drive like an idiot, but you're going to wreck it. I'm telling you that now. You're going to wreck this thing. So you have to respect the car. You have to respect the limits and you have to respect the power. And you can see it. I'm not driving it like a lunatic. And if you watch my 350 videos, you know, I'm, I'm on the car a lot harder because that car, I can't get that car to go sideways and, you know, spin around. It's, it's very, very rarely, unless I'm in the rain or I'm in really, really below freezing temperatures. But this car, this car you punch a throttle, you're gonna, you're gonna go off the road, especially if you have the advanced track turned off. Yeah, it's a cruiser, it's a muscle car. That's what this car is all about, an American muscle car. The last of its breed. Ford will never, ever make another Mustang like this. So that's why this car is going to always be in demand and people are always going to want it because you can't get it anymore. Okay. They're going to be making independent rear suspension muscle cars for many years to come up until everything switches over to electric vehicles based on you know government regulations. But what I think is going to happen with this is the values of this car are pretty strong right now. I mean, they didn't really take that much of a depreciation hit. So if you guys are looking to pick one up, I would consider doing it now because five years, 10 years from now, these cars might be 30, 40% more than what they are right now in the market. 
and I say the same thing for the 350s because Ford is never going to make these cars again. This is the last hurrah. This was the last hurrah in 2014. And then there was the new Radical S550 platform with the IRS and they finally got it right. And you know, Ford Performance and the engineers, they copied a lot of the attributes and design and engineering from like Audi, Porsche, BMW. They picked all those cars and those were used as baselines for the S550. And you know, they did a really good job. They didn't do a perfect job. You know, there's a lot of things on the, the newer platforms that I think could be better, especially with the rear suspension also using lightweight materials, but they have to keep the car within a certain price point. And that's where you, you are limited with manufacturing and economies of scale as far as where you're gonna keep everything. You know, I'm driving the car with one hand, I'm shifting it with the other. I don't feel scared. I don't feel like it's pulling me anywhere. I have no tram lining. There's no pull. There's no uneasiness of this car. I mean, the red line's at like seven grand, which is really low compared to my other cars. But, but yeah, man, when you get into it, you get into that throttle. sounds awesome my god you don't get a lot of that blower whine uh if you do a pulley upgrade and some more mods in it all you hear is blower whine which i don't really i'm not a huge fan of blower whine i like to hear exhaust so right now i'm not getting a huge induction sound coming into the car you guys will hear it in the audio but this road is nice and smooth it's got some nice little turns and you know like i said i'm, I'm not killing the car i'm doing like 60 and I don't feel like the car is going to kill me, but if I punch it, then I'm probably going to end up over there. That's something that I won't do. But there's a sharp turn over here that I take in the 350 all the time. And uh, right here, it's coming up. And I just kind of want to see how it's going to feel right now. See, it broke the tires loose at 60. <laughs> and these tires are warmed up. Yeah, I mean, it, it handles. But, man, if you give it any throttle input going into a sharp turn you're gonna go sideways this is like this car could be turned into the ultimate drift mustang i'm telling you with the amount of power and that rear end this thing could be the ultimate drifting mustang so like i said i hope you guys really enjoyed this video stay tuned for more content and if anybody out there is interested in owning this particular car you know just contact me direct i would love to find the right home for this car i want to sell it to someone that's going to take care of the car every time i sell one of my cars i stay in touch with them for years you know, they, we, we just do that. It's just like this car bond that I have with other like-minded enthusiasts that it's a little bit more personal to me when I sell a car and I like to connect with whoever's gonna get that car and become the next caretaker. So, like I said, stay tuned for more videos on the S197 GT500. I'm gonna be playing around with it in the next couple of days and then uh, hopefully we'll try to find this car a new home. If you guys watch this video, contact me before it goes on Bring a Trailer, eBay, or Auto Trader. Because like I said, if the car goes on Bring a Trailer and there's two bidders, this car, I don't know, somebody could bid it up to 80 grand. Who the hell knows? I mean, if you guys watch the current car market, it is on fire right now. So lack of supply, high demand drives prices way up in the used car market for specialty cars and the real estate market currently. 2021 right now with the economic uh, <laughs> relief that's going on and people are starting to get you know life back to normal and people are getting into a real spending sp uh, spree right now so if you guys want this car you don't want to miss out on it you're gonna have a very very hard time finding another one so contact me through the auto fanatic website i will see you guys on the next video soon take care guys